What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball Podcast uh, with me, Jonathan Jones, and this is a Speak Your Success Media production. And man, we're here today live on location uh, in Dallas at SMU. And we have an amazing guest today, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you just a little bit about him. So we have Coach Jeremy Hart here, and Coach Hart was named recruiting coordinator by head coach Andy Enfield. Uh, the South Garland High School alum played a pair of his collegiate seasons in Texas and started the charity Hustle with Heart in South Dallas, which brings in current NBA players and professional players to speak to kids about basketball, education, and life. Hart, a Dallas native, has coached for five seasons following a 10-year professional playing career, and he joins the Mustangs after recent stints at New Mexico State, at Kansas State, NC Elite 8, okay? And then he also coached at University of Mary Hardin Baylor from 2020 through 2022. And lastly, he also coached uh, the London Lighting of the NBL in Canada, okay? 2019, 2020, so international, coach, in, 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 international, man, international. Man, so uh, I'm, I'm <coughs> excited and delighted uh, to introduce to some, but just reminding those who already know who Coach Hart is, Jeremy Hart to be on the ball. What's going on, Coach? How we feeling? What's up, baby? How you doing, man? I appreciate you. Appreciate you. That's a great introduction. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Glad to be here with you. Glad, glad to be uh, here on, on campus with you. And man, so since you've been on campus, y'all have entered into the ACC. How, 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 how we how we feeling about talk about talk about just the energy that happened because you joined just before and then they crossed <clears throat> over to the a AC, uh, ACC. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about? you know, that, that energy on campus? Uh, the energy has been great. Um, man, it's, it's, it's really hard to put in words. Um, you know, this has been a long time coming. You know, obviously, like we talked off camera a little bit, um, SMU was in the Power Five back um, in the late 80s um, and, with, and before the Pony Express. Um, and it's been almost 30 years since they've been, been in the Power Five. So now to be back in the Power Five and going into the ACC, um, it's just a, a great feeling um, all around the campus, all around the university, all around Dallas. So um, super excited, you know, you're getting a chance to play against um, teams like Duke and North Carolina and NC State and uh, Clemson and so forth. So uh, we're super pumped up, man. Everybody's excited. Uh, it's a great buzz around the city. Um, yeah, and you know, we just ready to get this thing rolling. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned one SEC, you know, ha have, having been part of the fire, Power Five previously, which which initially I wasn't even aware of. I knew about the Pony Express and everything like that, but I didn't even know that they were, you know, already a, a history Power Five institution. Mm -hmm. So so as, as y'all getting ready to go into the season, and just like you mentioned, you know, going head to head with the UNCs and with the Dukes and you know and, and with the Clemsons, how how are you all feeling about how your talent is going to match up against you know some of those type programs? Uh, we feel really good. Uh, we, you know, we've recruited some some really good players at the transfer portal. I mean, you know, in today's basketball, the transfer portal um, is is big in college basketball. Um, so you're able to get better quickly because you're able to get guys that's been in college for a couple of years. Um, they have a lot of playing experience, um, experience on a big stage, or playing in big games or whatnot, NCAA tournament experience. So you're able to get better real quickly, and so I think. Um, with the group of guys that we got, um, we feel really good about them. Um, they're uh, they like each other. Um, they work hard. They they gym rats. Um, obviously, you don't know what your team looks like until you know the fall comes and we put it all together. But we really really like the group that we have and excited to see it, you know, unfold. For sure. And then on top of that, you got your pedigree with you know what the, the way you've been developing cultivating <clears throat> players and you know because I've, I've been following your journey and seeing you know how you've even developed yourself I know we talked about in the la last time we sat down and then you coming on and then joining coach Andy and then jo joining the staff how, how, how are you feeling about the staff what was what like what, what's the feel uh, with, with the program thus far around the staff uh, man our staff is is amazing um, I can't I can't uh, I can't say that enough about our staff our staff is great um, great group of guys. Uh, those guys been together for a long time at U USC with Coach. Coach Coach brought all those guys over with him, um, <clears throat> and their synergy and chemistry you can tell, 
you know, it's super, uh, super dope and super dope to be a part of. And I'm just trying to add on to that and be a small uh, piece of, of, of what they've already built over there and bring it over here. And I'm just trying to bring my synergy and, 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 and you know, everything that I can bring being a local being from Dallas. So um, my staff is great from the top, top to the bottom. And coach, coach is a great coach. Um, he's coached in the NBA. Um, he was the first player development coach in the NBA, one of the first player development coaches in the NBA. Um, he was a shooting coach. Um, he's worked with some of the greats around this game. Um, shoot, Glenn Rice, Dwayne Wade, uh, Jason Kidd, um, shoot, you name it, um, coaches has worked with him. Paul Pierce, you know, and coach, coach worked with a lot of guys. Um, and then over at USC, those guys, you know, um, they've, got, they've had 10 NBA players. Um, since 2018 um, and developed those guys. So, um, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of this staff. I'm happy to be a part of this program and feel extremely blessed to be in the position that I'm in. Yeah, man, that's awesome. And I mean, I guess you can go ahead and add Bronny to the list. Yeah. Right? You can go, yeah. go ahead and throw you. Go, go ahead, go ahead throw, <laughs> you know, go ahead throw in Bronny on, on, yeah. on that list too. Yeah. So that's pretty cool to yeah. see. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool to see. So I know with your focus around player development, mm -hmm. right? Can, can, can you walk us through your philosophy around, around player development? Um, yeah, so like it depends on what level. Uh, obviously, like when I started out doing player development, I was, I was working with guys who were um, in middle school and in high school. So um, I'm a big believer in, you know, fundamentals and teaching you know, um, the little nuances of the game on and off the court. So a lot of my development um, co teaching in the beginning was, you know, fundamentals, um, building a player of mind um, off, on and off the court. Um, as I've gotten some years under my belt and work with, you know, more, more guys. So now I work with college guys and work with NBA guys. So um, I think it's about you know, just finding a balance of, of working on things that they're good at um, and then also touching on um, their weaknesses and things where, that they can get better at. And a lot of a lot of player development has to do with your mentality to me. Like, I'm big on men, on the mental part of player development. I know everybody kind of see the on-court stuff, but the mental part is the, is the big, biggest key to me because going through my journey, I just know that if I wasn't mentally strong and prepared, you know, mentally to go through the things that I went through, the adversity that I went through, then I wouldn't have made it as far as I got. And some of these guys are really, really talented, but mentally they're not as strong, um, you know, as they should be. And so I try to help them with that and building their mind just as much as building their game, you know. And that's that's something that, I'm, that I really stand firm on because if you're strong mentally, you know, and you're talented and really talented and can play, I think the sky's the limit, you know, of, of reaching your goals and your dreams. How do you tailor individual programs for guys, especially knowing that, you know, sometimes when some guys come to you, they might be seeing this stuff on Instagram, they might be seeing this stuff on YouTube, and they're mm -hmm. trying to do all these moves and all these tricks and stuff that might not even benefit them. So how, how do you come in and tailor the, the plan for them? Like, no, we, we, not, we don't need to do that, right? This isn't for your game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, I forgot who said this, but it's a it's – a, it's a great quote out there. I can't remember who said it, um, but people don't know, uh, people don't care about what you know until they know how much you care. Um, I forgot who said that, um, but that was a great quote and I kind of live by that and stick by it. Um, I try to get to know the guys that I'm working with and develop a relationship with them, you know, on and off the court. So that way they know that I care about them and know that I got their best interests at heart. So then when I started to critique them and work with them, then they understand it's coming from a place of love and coming from a place of, you know, man, Coach Hart just trying to help me get better instead of, you know, just pounding them with, hey, man, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. And we don't even really know each other or we haven't had too much dialogue outside of basketball. So I'm big on just letting somebody get to know me and me get to know them. And then I can kind of work my way into Tell them like, hey man, like that's not your game, or that you shouldn't be doing that, or you should be doing this, and then it's coming from a different place. So that's kind of my tactic on how I develop. Yeah. I know y'all are interested in learning more about <laughs> the way Coach Hart develops players, and so are we. And we're gonna come back with more Beyond the Ball in just one moment.
All right, family. Look, I told y'all we we're going to do it. I told you we we're going to do it. I told you I wanted to spotlight your business. So I had to interrupt this episode to spotlight this business for our DFW Small Business Spotlight. And today we're talking about extreme hip hop with Trees. This is an energizing step workout that makes you feel liberated and alive by using a step and simple movement on and over and around the step. You know what I'm talking about? So look, while you're enjoying a fun environment with old and new music, Extreme Step focuses on all the elements of fitness. So you're getting all the elements, right? You're getting the cardiovascular, the muscular conditioning, the flexibility and balance. And y'all, I done seen these workouts, they be getting it, all right? And you're guaranteed to get addicted and you get to burn calories. Come on now, so you get to have fun and you get to burn off some calories. Extreme becomes a safe space where everyone is accepted. And it's a place to where they can come, let go of the worries of the world while getting healthy. Y'all tap in, treese.love.heart. And it's love spelled L-U-V. All right, treese.love.heart. Go ahead, shoot her a DM and click the link in her bio so you can find out about the next extreme hip hop session with Treese. All right, let's get back to the episode. And we're back to Beyond the Ball. We're going to continue this, this great dialogue with, with Coach Hart. And now I want to pick up, Coach, and I want to talk a little bit about how do you balance the short-term performance improvements with long-term development goals for players, especially those who are like at different stages in their career, mm -hmm. knowing you work with NBA guys, collegiate guys, and like middle school guys. So talk a little bit about that. Um, well, it's different now for me because obviously I work within a program within a university. So... Uh, with our university, you know, from the summer until about September, October, I kind of look at that as a good time frame of working on your game, like working on areas where you need to improve um, things that you want to be better in, you know, uh, and kind of take that um, that time to use that um, time frame to, to get guys better in that aspect. Um, once we start the season, um, our guys, I work with them on the shots that they're going to get within our offense, um, the team, the things, their strong points that we need them to be good at within our team, you know, and kind of just fine tune those things every day. Um, so it's kind of different um, with the college guys, with the with the pro guys. Um, I work with them on things that they're good at still because you, you need to keep, continue strengthening those things. And then also we touch on things that they can get better at going, in, going into the um, next season. Um, with the pro guys, it's like, um, a lot every guy is different you can work with a guy who just loves to be in the gym all summer long but you can also get a guy who been in the NBA like you know I work with Dorian and Dorian been in the NBA eight years he's going into year nine so Dorian don't want to just kill himself in the summertime you know he, he needs that rest and needs that recovery and that time you know to, to build his body back up spend time with his wife and kids things like that so um, with him it's kind of different, but you know, uh, other guys that I work with, like Jalen Wilson, like Jalen is a younger guy and he's trying to get it. So he's want, he wants to work all the time and wants to get better, you know, no matter how he's played 82 games or not. So um, every guy is different. So you just try to, like I said, just build a relationship, find that balance of, you know, what works best for what guy. Like I'm a firm believer in you don't train every guy the same, like no good player development coach trains every guy the same every player is different every every guy their movement is different the way they think is different you know um, some might play the same position but you know do different things so I just try to learn and learn the player as much as I, I can to be able to help them in the long run if that makes sense for sure yeah man shout out to Jalen Wilson I seen I seen he locked down that, that MVP no, that, uh, yeah, for, for summer summer league getting active yeah Jay Will Jay Will is a uh, Jay Will is a uh, a great, great, great young man, great kid. I, uh, I love working with him. I think he's, uh, I think he's gonna have a long NBA career, and I'm super proud of him. Been knowing him since he was a little bitty, little bitty boy. Man, man, his dad played ball together. I came up under his dad. His dad used to show me the ropes when I was coming up. Um, you know, being a pro, um, taking me under his wing and working with me, talking to me. Um, you know, and everything like that. And so I've been knowing Jalen for a long time. Then getting a the chance to work with him. Um, been amazing and then I got to coach against him um, while I was at K-State um, actually was my scout um, he had 38 points on us 
Um, so my scout didn't work, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we ended up winning the game. We, you know, when they 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 beat us at KU. So, um, man, I'm kind of joking around about that right now. But after that, you know, he went to the NBA, and I've been working with him in the summer. So, um, it's been it's, it's it's been great to 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 follow his journey and to help him along the way a, um, a little bit as well. Yeah, so let's stay right there for a little bit. Like how you're talking about how he went and transitioned from uh, collegiate to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Like how do you help guys, uh, how do you help guys really navigate that shift with all the challenges that are there? Uh, I think just talking to, talking to them, uh, uh, helping guys understand that the NBA is different, um, helping them understand that while they're in college you need to build these habits. Um, so when you get to the NBA, it's a, it's not um, surprising, or you know, it's not a, hey, I'm gonna just turn on the switch and start doing doing these things now. Like a lot of guys that I work with in college, yeah, K State, um, you know, whether it's Marquise or Keontae, um, you know, I tried to in, in, help them instill things that was gonna help them as they transition into the NBA. And if you do that early, then once you get there, it's I don't want to say it's a smooth transition, but it's an easier transition because you're prepared and you've built good habits over time, you know, rather than getting there and then trying to build those habits. So I think just talking to them and, and helping them build good habits while they're in college um, and, and keeping them on the right track, being, being telling them the truth as well. I think um, a, lot of a lot of coaches um, kind of find it hard to tell guys the truth, and I, I, I'm just a firm believer in telling guys the truth. I, you know, they might not like it in the moment, but I, I believe if you don't like it, at some point you'll come back and say, hey, man, coach, I appreciate you telling me what you told me. Like, man, you told me the truth, and, you know, I didn't pre I didn't like it in the time, but, you know, I needed to hear that, you know. So I just stand firm on being myself and telling guys the truth, and, you know, um, help, you know, the truth hurts sometimes, but it's also helpful as well. So, you know, just that's just my belief. Mm -hmm. So, So looking at, like, potential setbacks and just like you said you know sh shooting them straight telling the truth so h how do you uh, how do you really work with work work with guys who might be in a slump or might be dealing with injury uh, to help them recover like the physical and the mental aspect uh, keep, keeping them in the gym keeping them in tune um, you know uh, I remember uh, K-State Keontae um, Johnson uh, I think maybe like the first like 15 20 games he was shooting about 50 55 from the three and uh, he got in a little slump right after that um, for about two weeks um, you know and I just told him like hey man we gotta get back in the gym and get back to our habits and get back to you know staying true to the work and, and keeping the main thing the main thing and um, um, that's 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 a that's a big big belief of mine too so um, just keeping the main thing the main thing staying in the gym staying locked in staying Staying true to your habits, and you know you'll you'll, you'll get through the slumps. I like that. Yeah, just water will works, right? Yeah. Water, water will work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. So, so as we look at communication with with the, with the coaching staff, I want, I want to talk about that just for a second because I know with with, with you and, and recruiting and you with the overall uh, player development, how, how do you make sure that? That the development plan that you know that you have for some guys, how do you make sure that that aligns with the overall team strategy? Uh, that's just that just comes with the job. Just you know, being in tune with the job, being in tune with coach, um, just learning coach, knowing what learning what he likes, what he what he, what, he uh, what his beliefs are, and what he you know what he got what he want guys doing, um, and guys being good at you know in his in his uh, in his offense and in his program. And then, you know, that trickling down to me and implementing that, you know, as I'm working with guys, that's that's uh that's just being in tune with the job. I like that. I like that. So com coming into the season, right, you, you, you're seeing guys going through workouts, you're seeing guys doing drills, y'all are running the offense and everything um, like that. Are there any specific traits or, like, habits that you see where you can look at a player and be like, that guy's got the X factor, or this guy could be something special. Is there anything that you know that that you really identified or can hone in on to where you can be able to tell these things? Yes, uh, the thing that a few things that that, that attracts me um, to the, to what you're saying is um, a guy's passion for the game. 
um, just being able to tell how much he loved the game, um, how much he cares, um, how much he cares about his teammates, how much he cares about winning. Um, I think those those three things are, are very key. And if if a guy has that and he's really talented, then you can see you know the path that he that he that he's on you know to be really successful and to play this game at a at a high level. And then you know you get a guy that's really talented and has the measurables along with the passion for the game, the work ethic, and being a great teammate, then, you know, those those guys turn out to be NBA players. Mm. I like that. I like that. So I, I, I know we I know we talked a little bit about like some of the drills and stuff like that that be happening on YouTube and Instagram. I know I know you done seen some silly stuff because I done seen some <laughs> I done seen some real silly stuff. Some of it effective, some of it you know ma- maybe not so much. <laughs> but how do you, how do you encourage how do, how do you encourage players to on one side master master the fundamental skills, but while also allowing them the freedom to develop like their unique style of play? Oh, uh, you know. I don't I don't knock nobody and what they you know their training or what the things that they're doing I just uh, you know like you said I I see stuff but I don't I don't knock nobody and what they're doing um, what I do think is I think players today you know they don't play enough you know like obviously I work with players you know um, our college guys on our team um, NBA NBA guys but I encourage guys to go play you know, because that's where you get your creativity and, you know, your instinct and your feel and things like that. So I, I, I'm still a big believer in the old school stuff. You know, like going to play 21, going to play five on five, you know, playing one on one after workout, stuff like that. So, you know, just as much as you need to train and, and develop and stuff like that, I'm, st- I'm still a firm believer in those old school, those old school tactics. So I, I, I believe that stuff takes you further than just working out every day and doing drills every day. I know y'all are enjoying this conversation because I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, you know, getting to, getting to see a different side of Coach Hart, him diving in. But we're getting ready to run Coach Hart through our rapid fire segment. So don't leave. We're coming right back with more Beyond the Ball. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Had to interrupt the episode just for a moment. If you are not subscribed to the channel, you got to make sure that you get subscribed. All right. I just need to go on YouTube, type in Speak Your Success Media and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the episodes. You don't want to miss any Beyond the Ball episodes because we're giving you tangible strategies, stories that student athletes can utilize to help them succeed beyond their degree. Okay. Smash that subscribe button, get caught up on the episodes, and I'll see you next time. All right, get back to the episode. Coach, so looking at the resume, looking at the track record, you, you're, you're one of those people that, that, that has, that, that's put in the work, high, highly decorated from what I've seen with the resume and putting up, putting up buckets and doing, doing it all, right? Doing it all. I, I, ain't, I ain't forgot. You, I, I, ain't, I ain't forgot, okay? Hit us with about 30, okay? <laughs> But after after a decade after a decade of you playing professionally, what would you say was the most challenging aspect of, of transitioning from a player to becoming uh, a development coach? Um, man, that's a great question. Um, the biggest challenge for me was going back to school. Um, was going back to school. Um, I left college to go play ball professionally. Um, had no intentions on going back to school ever again. Um, I just thought that I would play ball for as long as I can till I'm 40 years old, the ball would just continue to have air in it and I would bounce it as long as I can and make money playing it. Obviously, that's not how life works. Um, I went to Canada um, to coach, but I went to Canada because they offered me a job to come play and uh, you know I knew my body was done. So they ended up offering me the job to come coach and when I went to go coach, COVID hit while I was there. Um, you know, came home, we lost our jobs. So when I lost my job, my college coach, Ron Holmes, he called me and asked me, like, hey man, you already coaching, like, you need to go back to school. Uh, you go back to school, finish your degree, you're gonna be a heck of a college coach and be at a power five one day um, and be in the NBA one day coaching. And he had all his dreams for me. And I sat there and I was like, coach, there's no way I'm going back to school. Like I'm, I'm not doing it. And you know, uh, you know, 
I went through the process. Um, I never forget. I sat down with the advisor at Mary Hart and Baylor. Um, we went through my transcript. She said, "Hey, um, you have 62 hours to graduate. Um, so you'll graduate in 2023. You graduate in 2023, and you know every life is good." And I was like, "What? <laughs> 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 this is 10 years from not playing ball. I mean, after playing ball, so I'm like." I haven't been in school in 10 years. I'm like, 62 hours is crazy. So wow. she's like, yeah, you'll be in 18 hours this semester. You'll be in 18 next semester. You take some in the summertime. And she just started going through all this stuff in my head, just started spinning and started hurting. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. But long story short, like, man, um, that was the biggest challenge for me going back to school. I went back to school. Um, I graduated in two years. I graduated May 7th, um, 2022. And as I graduate, right when I graduated, um, Coach Tang, Jerome Tang, was getting the head coaching job. He got the head coaching job in March, I believe, uh, in April um, at Kansas State. And, um, you know, um, that's kind of how everything um, transpired. But that was the hardest thing for me, just going back to school and finishing that degree. And I did that along with um, basically being an assistant coach at Mary Hart and Baylor, along with driving back and forth from to Dallas to train kids. and and things like that. So the transition wasn't easy. So talk, talk a little bit about how how your experience as a player influenced your coaching style. Uh, my, my, my experience as a player, uh, I think, you know, I spent a lot of days in the gym by myself, um, a lot of time by myself uh, in the gym, just working on my game, um, you know, uh, creating drills by myself to put me through. Um, it wasn't a lot of player development coaches um, I had access to and maybe some that was around then but I didn't have access to them so you know, I spent a lot of time by myself in the gym and I would literally sit down and I'd be like man you know what I'm gonna do this do this do this and I was just creating drills you know and put myself through it and it would be hard <laughs> you know and I'm by myself I'm rebounding by myself you know and I literally would just think of you know just you know I don't know it's weird you know even today like I I, I can I can create drills right now like you know in my head and just go out and do it and uh you know it worked you know so um I think going through that <clears throat> was a gift from God and you know God set me up for my purpose to be in the position that I'm in now you know to to do it by myself and show me that you know like hey this is the plan that I have for you you know you're going to help others as as you transition to coaching and so that's that's kind of how that went so speaking of helping others transition to coaching if 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 there was a if there was a guy or somebody who approached you and current they might be a current player you know they might be winding down overseas might be one down in the league you know wherever they might be and they're like how do, how do I get into coaching because I, I see your transition your transition was smooth like what what advice would you give them on how they can you know get involved in this journey my, my advice would be um, even go, before that I would say as a player my advice to a player would be find things that you like as a player whether it's coaching you know, I know we, you asked me the question about coaching, but no matter what it is that you like, I would tell a player, you know, like, because as, as basketball players, we put so much into this game and we want so much out of just playing basketball. This is what we love to do, right? So we we kind of lose ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, as a player, I, all I wanted to do was play basketball. I didn't know, I didn't really know what I liked outside of basketball. <laughs> You know, it was hard for me to tell somebody. If you asked me, like, what you, would you like to do outside of basketball? It would be hard for me. It was hard for me to tell you at the time because all I did was hoop. You know, and that's a lot of guys' story. So, I would say find something that you that you love outside of basketball while you're playing basketball. Still give everything to basketball, but still find things that you love to do. And then, you know, to answer your question about the, uh, getting into coaching, um, I think it's about you know um, just finding the avenue that works for you whether that's going to be a GA, whether that's taking a high school job, whether that's coaching AAU um, and working working your way up. Like, it's different avenues um, to, to, to get to, you know, to A to Z. You just have to find what works for you. You know, when I remember when I started coaching, someone told me, like, hey, man, for you to be a power fire coach, you need to coach AAU, build relationships with players, build relationships with college coaches, and then that way you can move up. And, you know, I just didn't feel like that was the route for me. You know, I, my route was, you know, working with middle school kids that was in middle school, young kids in middle school and high school, developing them, 
you know, letting letting those guys be my resume. And so as they got better, people saw they got better. And it was like, hey, who are they working with? Oh, they working with that dude, Jeremy Hart. And that's kind of how my name got out there. And then, you know, I became a graduate assistant. Obviously, my one year as a graduate assistant, we went to the Elite Eight and I, we had two NBA players. So, you know, I was able to get a job at New Mexico State from there. So everybody's path is different, but it's just finding the avenue that works for you. And, and, you know, um, really honing in on that. You know, I'm big on, you know, being being uh, intentional about what you're trying to do. Like, you can't just say, oh, man, I want to coach when I'm done playing because that's a broad thing. You want to coach, but you want to coach AAU, you want to coach high school, you want to coach college, you want to coach NBA. You know, it's just like with prayer. Like, I'm big on in, being intentional with my prayer. Like, when I pray and ask God for things, I don't just ask him for broad things. Like, I'm intentional about what I'm asking for, and I just believe in, as a player, uh, someone's trying to transition into coaching, you should be like that as well. That's good. That's good, man. I like that. Come come with the fire, coach. Come with the fire. <laughs> okay, help them out. Help the people out. <laughs> All right, so as, so as we get ready to land this plane, uh, one, one question I want to ask you. Well, 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 we'll get to that after. I want to do the rapid fire first. We're okay. gonna hit you with the rapid fire first. Okay. And I just want you just to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Just choo, 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 you gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot them off. You gonna shoot them off. All right, all right. Here we just, go. just like we in the gym doing two ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, just, hey, just get it up. Hey, I bet. Hey, here we go. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's get it. What's your favorite drill to run in practice? <sighs> Three on two, two on one. Hmm. Who is your toughest matchup as a player? Monte Ellis. Morning workouts or evening workouts? Morning. Favorite NBA player of all time? LeBron James. What's the most underrated skill in basketball? Shooting. The best advice, best advice you received as a player? Work hard every day. Which college player's development surprised you the most? Mm, that's a tough one. Tyrese Prince. Go to motivational quote. Trust your work. I knew you was going there. I knew you was going there. <laughs> one word to describe your coaching style. Uh, that's a great question. Detail. Zone defense or man to man? Man to man. Favorite city or country you've played in? Morocco. Hmm. Pre-game meal of choice? Chick-fil-A. Best current NBA player to build a team around? LeBron James. <laughs> What's more important, talent or work ethic? Work ethic. Top book you would recommend to athletes? UOU, mm. Eric Thomas. Favorite off-season activity? Just spending time with family. On the sideline, you're going to be rocking sneakers or dress shoes? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to recover after a tough game? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you love to train for a day? LeBron. What's the one skill every player should master? Shooting. There it is. Coach, do me a favor and just let them know where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you at this time. Uh, you can follow me at on Instagram or Twitter, uh, CoachHard32. Um, that's the only social media platform that I have. There we go. No, you good. You good. And then, Coach, lastly, I just want to end it up like this. Who is one person that you want to put in the winner's circle of the week? You say, I see you grinding. Might be under the radar to some, but you've been seeing them putting in work, putting in time. Who would that person be for you? Uh, that person would be my, my my guy. He's been helping me for for about this will be the third summer that he's been helping me. His name is Preston Paulus. Um, he's been helping me. He moved to Dallas um, two years ago. Um, he coached at Prolific Prep, a prep school in uh, California. He moved to Dallas with his girlfriend. He showed up every day with me. Um, morning to afternoon working with working with um, my pro guys and he's helped me tremendously for the past two summers I mean like they, this guy's a worker um, and he actually uh, getting ready to announce some big news here soon I'm not gonna say it on camera I'm gonna let him announce it but uh, shout out to Pete man that's my that's my guy he's a he's a, a heck of a person and you know uh, I just appreciate him the last few summers of 
you know, the work he's put in with me, you know, um, with, with looking for no credit and nothing in return. So that's my guy. There we go, man. Coach, always a pleasure. Man, thank you for, yes, sir. you know, allowing us to pull up on you. Y'all, yes, this is Beyond the Ball. This has been a Speaker Success Media production. And with Beyond the Ball, we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Beyond the Ball Podcast.